Well, hey there, idiot. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, I will be continuing the Tanacon analysis with this part two. Dr. Phil hasn't released anything further than that so far, so this will be a little bit shorter. Also, I will let you know that I skipped through a various segment of the beginning half, more or less, of this portion of the interview because it wasn't as eventful. So now we have a whole pile of people in the room and we'll get to watch the dynamics of a whole bunch of different people. But first, let's go ahead and roll the intro here. Now, I know that we would like to be able to get into the analysis, but there is a breaking news story, for which I will turn it over to my uh, partner here at the studios, Logan. So go ahead and uh, take it away now, Logan. Thank you. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, that says it's in the UK. Okay. That's fine. Everything's fine. Hi. Hi. Um, this, this is a sponsored segment. <clears throat> I'm, I'm prepared for this. I, I knew this was, I knew this was coming. Everything, everything's fine. Lo Logan's out. His IP address says that he's at London. He's at London right now. He's at, I don't, I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and go, um, uh, it, it, well, it says here, um, to, to, to take control of your internet experience today with NordVPN. Um, and, and right now, get a two-year plan at a huge discount at nordvpn.com slash observe. It does say that. It says a huge discount. And use the code observe to get one additional month for, for free. That's pretty cool. And it's, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash observe to take control of your internet again uh this this is going really well and oh my goodness um do you, do you want to no oh no, no me okay cool no absolutely please you you go ahead and step on here cool yeah no i'm happy okay um are, do you want to are you sure you don't oh all right goodbye i was actually in the other room watching netflix uh, using NordVPN, I didn't have the show that I wanted here in the US, so I went ahead and just switched my location over to the UK using a really simple button. It was extremely easy, and I was able to watch my show, so that was pretty cool. Whatever he did a second ago, what he said is true. Also, it is risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this sounds interesting to you and you can see using a VPN in your day-to-day -day life, I highly suggest you go and check out NordVPN because I myself use it and have been using it for quite some time now and I highly suggest it to you. Once again, that is nordvpn.com slash observe and then use the code observe at checkout to get an additional month for free. But that is enough from us here over in the studio. Let's turn it over to Logan in the studio and uh, we'll be able to continue with this episode. Wow, what breaking news from Logan. Thank you so much and thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode. We greatly appreciate it here. Moving on to the actual analysis, if you don't know the story, I suggest you go and check out the first video in this so far two-part series and that will get you caught up as to the situation. For now, we're going to go ahead and dive right into the interview itself. Jackson, thanks for being here. Hi. Uh, you got burned for 35 grand. So just so you know, Jackson used to work with slash kind of for a, an odd business relationship with Michael earlier and Michael didn't handle anything well on his side. So Jackson's whole attitude so far is being pretty frustrated with Michael. You'll get to see that pretty soon. That's just the little introduction that you get. Brand? Yes. And actually 20, 25,000 of it was actually a fan's money. And you know that. So that was in chapter what, seven what? bankruptcy. Michael, like, we, the thought, trustee. we filed for it beforehand you and you listen and just shut up. Okay. Like let anybody else talk, stop deflecting. I'm, is, I'm, that, is that possible for you? I'm not I don't know deflecting. if it is. Cause that's what you do, you deflect. Do speak. Okay, wow, all right, so Jackson's obviously angry. I'm not gonna go into that non-verbally as to why, but I will actually say something real quick about the editing. 
So I figured out that if I throw on this weird VHS filter and do the flippy and the twisties and all the other weird editing that I do and the pitch change, it has been squeaking by Dr. Phil's radar, so to speak. So I'm going to continue doing that. I'm sorry for the quality drop that that filter adds, but it's at least allowing me to get things out to you. As far as this situation so far, since Jackson has been introduced and he now gets to speak, he's obviously on the attack. And I don't know, I feel a little psychic here saying that Michael will probably go onto the defensive pretty heavily, but let's actually see what happens. Beforehand, before anything about bankruptcy came through, we signed a dissolvement of our management, this is months before, and in that, you were supposed to send a check for that money into whatever car I see fit. And you said, okay, I'm gonna send out a check written to you, and it's gonna be there this week. Didn't come, kept reaching out to you, kept pushing it back, said it'll, it'll be there. And then suddenly, a month and a half later, you're like, oh, my attorney will contact you. And then not even from you, I hear from him that you went bankrupt. All of a sudden, that doesn't just happen. I mean, it, it did just happen, oh my but... Oh God, you're, like, you just, you cannot take accountability. I'm I've taking been sitting accountability! Here, I've been sitting back there, watching you just Be smoking here, mirrors. What's new? That's what you did the entire time I was signed to you. Jackson, no, it's not. I verified you, I built oh you, God. I got you your Vivo channel. <laughs> All right, so we're hearing Michael about to dive off into defensiveness here. So Jackson wants his money. Sounds like Michael promised him his money and then tried to use the bankruptcy that he had to file as an excuse to not give Jackson his money, which I get when you're filing for bankruptcy. It's pretty bad financial situation, but that doesn't excuse him for the fact that he was supposed to get Jackson his money and he didn't, which is not really a fun thing either. But as far as Jackson's nonverbal communication goes throughout that, he stays very synchronized. I didn't see any portions, even in areas where he could have maybe like blurred the lines or fudged the numbers or something along those lines. He didn't flash any possible desynchronization, which could be seen as deception. So all throughout that, he seemed very synchronized. He's frustrated in its organic and authentic frustration. And what he was saying didn't misalign with that. That being said, there wasn't too much to really possibly misalign to begin with. So take that or leave it as you will. We'll continue on into the rest of this. Channel does not He's make not you a good manager. I, I did my job. I should have done it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so I believe this young woman's name is Allie, I think was her name. So she was a prior roommate to Michael and is kind of talking about Michael on a more personal basis. They weren't romantically involved, but she was living in very close quarters with him. And she also has kind of come forward and said that he's not a great human being, very controlling, etc. And so <laughs> Michael got on to Dr. Phil planning on having this I don't know, maybe pity party for himself to springboard off into I'm such a great business guy that you should do business with me. I think that was his plan and it is not going so swell so far. All the emotions that we're seeing are genuine though, so that's good. That is why I called you out for not verifying one of your clients and I said it was very unprofessional as a manager. You got angry. The fact that you said that you did, did not touch her. Did you write her, your own did, song? Yes, I watched you okay. touch her. I was hey, in the hey, room. Hey. I sat there on the couch in your apartment Jackson. as you literally physically assaulted her and then called the cops and played victim like you're doing up here. Jackson. Like what? Did I do everything for your brain? <laughs> Whoa, now. These are different allegations altogether. No longer now is he being accused of being a bad business person. He's also being accused of being a sexually assaultive person. That's a very massive accusation. I wish that I could see Jackson's face during this and maybe do a little bit more digging onto that, like that whole avenue alone. In my opinion, it would be worth diving into, but there's nothing really available beyond this, so can't really do it. But whoa, things are getting a little bit more heated than they were in the last one, which by the way, I've, I've gone through this once before, so I kind of have an idea as to where it went. It's gonna get intense here in a little bit. Uh, more intense, more emotions, you'll see. Brand that you no! wanted. Okay, well that's laughable. I named the clothing line. Why I did, okay, and then why did nobody get the clothes? I don't know. Michael. <laughs> okay, so Michael is in full defensive mode. As we can see, it's not really reflected in his nonverbal communication because we're having these odd angles and shots and it's a little hard to be able to establish. So 
right now from what I understand is that Jackson and Michael were working together and Michael was supposed to be providing some of these assets to Jackson's side of Jackson's business. And I think from what I understand, Jackson was selling merchandise that Michael was supposed to help create the merchandise and get it out. But if I remember correctly, he didn't send it out anywhere and it just sat in a bunch of boxes. And so all of Jackson's fans were like, yo, Jackson, what's, what's going on? Where's the merch? Why aren't we getting any of this? And it was because Michael dropped the ball, from what I understand, to catch you up on the situation. Look, um, I've had Blake weigh in here that said that you've done a great job for him. I've had Taylor weigh in here that said that you have really made an evolution since Tanacon and really turned over a, a new leaf and tried to listen to other people and and embrace that. I, I, I've even reached out so far as to talk to your mother, Amy, and she gave a statement. She said, Michael has always had a heart for helping others. His love and success and money became so of all opinions to ask about a child, the parent's opinion is oftentimes the most biased opinion that you could possibly get. And for us, that almost seems like it would be like Dr. Phil handing one to Michael on this front. And technically he is, but you'll see why he does it. And I'll talk about the psychological reasons behind what he did and why he did it after we hear the actual statement itself. Regardless, let's pay attention to what Michael's emotional state reflects as this letter, email, whatever this was that his mom wrote up about him is read out aloud. Let's find out. Prevalent when his success began to interfere with relationships with his peers in school, he turned his drive. Okay, so I'll talk about the expression of the eyebrows in this area. So we can see from Michael that his eyebrows are drawn together. This is common in two various emotional states. That's anger and sadness, the two universal states that that lies in, that drawing together. Now in anger, it's drawn together and usually lowered or not moving at all, just drawn straight together. But in sadness, there's a pushing upwards of the glabella here in the middle as well. And that's an indicator of sadness, can also be an indicator of fear, and sadness and fear can also work hand in hand from time to time. But it's that pushing upwards in the middle that indicates sadness rather than the frustration. So when you see a person whose face is sad, that's one of the small movements of the face that gives you that feeling as to why they are sad. As to the rest of his face, it falls in line along with that sad expression from the eyebrows. He has very relaxed cheek muscles. You can see the corners of his mouth are lowered slightly. This is a sad or grieved expression. And that doesn't mean that he's sad about his mom writing but he could be sad reflecting the emotional state that is presented by his mom in her writing. I hope that makes sense. Let's keep watching. To succeed into a passion and into motivation, Michael had a plan, a successful plan, to bring people in through shifts and schedules. Michael returned from Tanacon exhausted and defeated. He was receiving death threats. So now it's moved away from the emotional statements that his mom was making about him being such a self-starter, blah, 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 all that stuff at the beginning where Michael was presenting the saddened expression. And now it's shifted into more talking about Michael's success. And you can see that that sadness has slipped away. That also indicates to us that that initial expression of sadness is something that Michael is actually feeling. He's feeling struck to the heart. I don't know if that's even a saying, but I'm going to use it over this specific letter from his mom. We'll talk about why that's important from Dr. Phil in just a moment. Clients dropped him because they didn't want people knowing they were friends. He lost his home, he lost his car, he lost absolutely everything. The person they are attacking and criticizing is a living, breathing individual with feelings, insecurities, and a... I'm not sure exactly what's gonna be playing out on Michael's face after this, but if you notice, he did a teeny tiny mouth shrug, but that's a lower lip quiver that's common in sadness about to cry. Uh, so he did that. Along with that, he also has a postural shift and a nervous gesture that indicates to me that whatever's gonna happen next, it's gonna be centered around a much more expressive and emotive expression on his face. 
and I'm betting it's going to be centered around sadness as well. You probably know this as well, but that's something that you're able to use in your normal day-to-day -day conversations. As you read a person's face as you're talking to them, it helps you anticipate where things will go from there on out. This is helpful in things like, well, like I said, everyday conversations, but also in things like sales or customer service. All of these different avenues can use nonverbal communication well, and it'll help you. This is one of those things that you can benefit with is this predetermining where the emotive state of a conversation is going to go. Let's keep watching. Hope to be accepted and liked. This person being attacked feels alone, can't trust anyone, now wonders if... A lot of tenseness in the chin down here. This comes from crying as well. It's difficult to fake these sorts of emotions when you're not a trained actor or actress, or perhaps you have a little bit of talent for displaying emotions well. So far from what we've seen, Michael hasn't been an actor during this time. He hasn't been showing his acting chops throughout this. He's been quite genuinely defensive the whole time. So it is safe to assume that now when he is on national television, there's all sorts of pressure and adrenaline and emotions happening in general that this expression of sadness isn't coming from him trying to force an expression of sadness to feel sad or to make other people feel sad. It's coming from a genuine place of sadness. He's emotionally feeling the weight of his mother's words here and it's making him become emotional. Let's keep watching. They can trust themselves. My child was eaten alive by the vicious keyboard bullies and it has changed all of us forever. Our entire family has changed. I am proud of him every day. I'm proud of his perseverance. I'm proud of his drive for success and redemption. I am aching for him to find- So now we can also see Michael doing a lip touching gesture here. This is a self-soothing gesture in regards to the agitation that is this welling up of emotions that he's experiencing due to the letter from his mom. And this is common in times that people are crying. It could be seen as him perhaps wanting to prevent himself from crying on camera or go blocking the mouth where you cry from and your eyes and blah, blah, blah. Not likely here. Long story short, I don't think Michael's trying to hold back his emotion here in that it helps his case, but he's also not faking it. It's a genuine emotion. I hope that makes sense to you. Let's keep watching and real friends, real confidants, real business partners that conduct business with integrity. I pray he will find happiness, peace, success, and love. Doesn't every mom pray their child find... So you can see Michael's getting more and more worked up with this. You can see it in his eyes now too. They are filled with tears and it's a constant synchronized emotion across his face. It's genuine. It's love. You know, your mother standing behind you. You've got one, two, three, four people right here that took time out of their lives to come here to weigh in. We're about to see why Dr. Phil did what he did, and I'll explain in case you don't catch it. Let's watch. Because they obviously care enough about you. They see some redemption in you, some talent in you, some worth in you to invest more. When you need to worry is when they stop talking to you, when they stop saying anything to you, and you won't stop deflecting, as Jackson very aptly observes. And what have I said to you at every bank? Get out of your own. Jackson's not buying the tears. And Dr. Phil, I'll go ahead and explain why Dr. Phil did that uh, as far as an interview flow goes and setting the tone, the emotional and responsibility tone for the rest of this. So Jackson's obviously still upset. Now, Michael is upset. He's sad. He's crying. He feels emotionally stirred by the letter that his mom wrote. Dr. Phil didn't need to get that. Dr. Phil knows that it's a biased thing to get a parent's letter regarding their successful child. That's not why Dr. Phil got it. He got it so that he could do this positional change in regards to his authority and his responsibility in regards to Michael's authority and Michael's responsibility. So with this, Dr. Phil has done a subtle and not to put it in a dark turn, this can help in many intervention situations, but he's broken down Michael's emotional wall. He's stripped him down to where no longer is he so defensive. He realizes that he has support. He's not feeling the insecurity. 
and he hears these words from his mom and then Dr. Phil says that there's these other people that are doing this and you can see that it's really breaking down Michael's walls because now what Dr. Phil's going to do is he's going to shift from instead of trying to berate this very defensive person who will never hear anything, he's now talking to the very young man, Michael. That's who he's talking to, not to CEO Michael, not to I'm a successful guy Michael, not to I've been cyberbullied Michael, not to defensive Michael. He's talking to the young man, Michael himself. This psychological tactic has made it to where now Dr. Phil has the opportunity to at least push or nudge Michael in the correct direction of being more responsible and of being able to act well from this point on and prepare better perhaps and so on and so forth. Whereas before, Michael was way too defensive. This was a very excellently and tactfully chosen segment of script to be able to read to Michael that worked exactly how it was supposed to. You'll be able to see that play out from this point on. Let, let's do that. Why? You keep trying to explain everything away. I just don't know what else to do. Well, I'm telling you what else to do. You have said things, you have done things, because I think you let ego overcome compassion. You let ego... So you can see this now, how this is psychologically playing out. Dr. Phil is saying, you let ego overcome compassion. Now, if he had tried to say that earlier in the interview where Michael was in full defensive mode, that would never have landed. Michael would have immediately retorted with some sort of, no, I don't have blah, 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 you can imagine. But now that Michael has been psychologically torn down to the more honest and genuine and authentic him, the very young and stressed him, now Dr. Phil can be like, listen, these things are happening. This was such a masterfully done tactic by Dr. Phil in this specific segment. Let's continue watching. Oh, overcome empathy. You let this get to your head, I think, because you're young and inexperienced. And I want to tell you something. I've been in this business, the entertainment arena, television, education, healing, all of that, people on, on in this medium for 25 years. And the bigger the talent, the bigger the star, the smaller the ego. I've had fourth runners up from American Idol show up with an entourage you can't get through the building. 30 minutes late. And Stevie Wonder shows up an hour early with donuts for everybody. <laughs> it's the people that get... So now you can see that Dr. Phil is more or less almost insulting Michael at this point of being like, hey, you have, in comparison, an ego of maybe a third or fourth runner-up from American Idol. That's where your ego is at right now. And then there are truly brilliant people, which by simple logical processing is not Michael in Dr. Phil's narrative here. We have truly brilliant people who have a much smaller ego. Once again, if you think about this, that would not have landed nearly as well earlier in the interview. He had to get that letter in from his mom. Very tactfully done. A little bit of success that goes to their head and they strut around like King Kong. I have some other people here. Um, some people here, Felicia, Patty, Sammy, Lily, Lisa, uh, Lydia. Obviously, there was a cut there and the flow of everything. I think there was a recap or something along those lines, but we'll get to see where Michael's emotional state is now. If it's been a period of time before he's gotten to come back onto the camera, we'll get to find out. Let's keep watching. Alex, Skyler, Maddie, Alicia, the, all of these folks here were at TanaCon as well. If you were there, hold your hand up. That's an interesting question. All of these folks here were at TanaCon. If you were there, hold your hand up, and maybe half of them, it looks like, but maybe the ones he listed were only there. Anyway, not, not important, but you can see on Michael's face, there's been at least enough time for him to recompose himself and continue back into the rest of the interview. So there's been at least probably 10 to 15 minutes in there, maybe a little less, but judging by the inflammation on Michael's face, it's been enough time for that to at least subside some.
What do you want to say? I don't know what I can say besides I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't get to meet the people. If you didn't, I'm sorry that you didn't have the expectations that you had. I, I had the best intentions. I wanted everyone to have a great time, and I'm sorry if you did not. Um, there's nothing I can do now to change that, but I'm sorry. Alex, go ahead. Hi. Um, seeing this now kind of frustrates So, I'm sorry. That is correct. That's what he was supposed to say is I'm sorry. He still did follow up that apology with yet more I'm sorry that your expectations weren't met. And I know that some of you offered some very good feedback in regards to that. It could be that he doesn't feel responsible for it, but that's true. And many of us can apologize in that way when we're not directly responsible for something. Say somebody gets hit or they have a, uh, a, a fender bender, something like that. Well, you could say, oh man, I'm sorry that that happened to you because that's not your responsibility unless you were the one who smashed the car into theirs. And then you should directly say, I'm sorry for hitting your bumper. That was a bad thing by me. So Michael is still apologizing as if he had nothing to really do with it, but he at least had the I'm sorry in there. And it did feel more heartfelt in that area, but it still kind of feels like a smoke screen. Let's keep watching. It's me because I feel like you're not having accountability and a lot of gaslighting is happening. And I do feel sorry for you. I, I, if you were getting stressed, I really So she's still feeling this betrayal by Michael and this shifting of blame. Obviously, Jackson is still feeling this shifting of blame by Michael. And like we just pointed out, he did kind of once again shift the blame and do a little smokescreen apology rather than a genuine, authentic one. Let's keep watching. I really do feel sorry, but there's a lot. You're not taking accountability for what other people are really trying to say to you. You, you paid and money, Alex? You paid money to get in? Oh, yeah. How much? Yeah, and I, um, it was like $70 because I actually looked at my... Um, mm -hmm refund and it was $156 because my friend and I both went so that's like $80 actually so and we uh, drove up there from San Diego to LA so that's gas money too and did you get so, your did you get some money back oh I got the whole thing back about two months later uh -huh. Maddie go ahead um hi Michael I just wanted to preface this by saying yeah. that it is in no way acceptable for people to be commenting on your just telling you to kill yourself, that's completely irrational to me. Um, but I do appreciate the apology, and I think that it's very important for you to now set the tone for yourself because so much has happened, and listening to all these interviews and everything that everybody has to say um, really should just inspire you to set the tone for yourself, move on from this, and be the person that you know that you are in your heart. And your mother has explained you do have redeeming qualities, and I've, I've seen that. So I think it's very important that you highlight those and you set the tone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was well done by her. Seems like she almost might work in customer service or something along those lines. So well said by her. And once again, we can see that Michael's more receptive of it now, whereas before he was fully defensive. During that time, he didn't pop up with any defensive expressions or gestures. That being said, whenever the first woman responded, he did have a little bit of an upset expression on his face. He might have been hoping that the initial reaction to that would maybe be a little bit more sympathetic where hers wasn't. She just kind of cut the crap and got to it. So I understand why he's feeling that frustration. Is it founded? No, I, I think that she was absolutely correct in what she said and how she said it. But that's the only amount of defensiveness that we saw from Michael in that part as compared to the earlier areas where he was extremely defensive all the way through. It's good to be able to see that once again due to that specific tactic that Dr. Phil used. Who else? Anybody got something you want to say? Uh-huh, Skylar, go ahead. And then Lydia, um, we'll go to hi. you. Hi, Michael. Um, so I was one of the first few people to get into TanaCon and I watched you segueing around. Um, and it wasn't until later that I realized who you were. And I'm really, from the bottom of my heart, I am so sorry that you've had to deal with all of the online bullying. And I, my heart goes out to you um, because I've definitely been in that situation. But I also just felt like you completely disappeared. And coming on the show, just not taking accountability and speaking the way that you're speaking, I think that it would really benefit you to look inward. Thank okay. you for your feedback. Anybody over here? One thing about your apology that you gave us is um, that you kind of were deflecting the apology as well. I was like, <laughs> I knew it. 
<laughs> I was a little worried, you saw. Just by her setting of her face, eyebrows slightly lowered, not any emotion of sadness to reflect his. Many people, when they are feeling empathy, they'll semi-reflect the body language of the person that they're feeling empathy for. They're sad, it would reflect somewhat on her face. There's none of that. And so I was worried that going on forward from that, that she was just going to lay into him. And sure enough, that is, that is happening now. Let's see. Like, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't meet your expectation. Most, if we were going to apologize, say like, I'm sorry, I messed up. Like, put Well, I am sorry, I, I did mess up and I'm so sorry. I literally, if I could change it, I would. Um, I have to believe that everything happened for a reason, but I am truly so sorry. I wanted nothing more than for you to have the most amazing experience ever, obviously. And I'm so, so I'm paying attention to his head movements during this time. And they're all over the place, which kind of makes it difficult to get a read out of that. Because they're up, they're down, they're sideways, they're diagonal, they're everywhere. So that's just head movements that are happening there, aka we can't really use much of that for a nonverbal basis. That being said, his words now are starting to be correct. I am so sorry, I messed up, I wanted you to have the best time, and that didn't happen. Those are some of the words that he was supposed to say. Very good on his front. I don't think we would have gotten here if it weren't for that note from the mom. So sorry that I failed in that. And I wish I could fix it. So sorry that I failed in that. That's right. That's the apology. That's what he could have even said up on stage instead of his assistant. He could have gone up there and said that himself, but he didn't. And he had many times to do it since then as well, but he didn't. Let's keep watching and then I'll give my opinion at the very end of this. I wish I could, and I'll do everything in my power moving forward so that I can be a better person for that to never happen again. And I'm so sorry, not just to you, but to all of you, truly. Okay. Well, I appreciate you talking to them, and all, guys, thank you guys for participating for and for feedback. your comments yeah, to, you. to thank Michael. You for having us on here. Uh, I, I want to thank all of my guests today. Uh, I'm glad you came. I hope you're glad you came. And I think you can hear there are people that don't want you to die. No one here uh, wants him to no die. Wants no, that. that's, that's no what one I, wants I, him I hope die. everybody hears yeah, that. Yeah, and we don't want him to leaving say. here like... Okay, so let's talk about her emotional state that she might be feeling in regards to him. From her, I'm not getting as much sympathy. Uh, once again, there's not a lot of emotional reflection. Now there is, but a second ago where she was saying nobody wants him to die, there wasn't a lot of reciprocation from his emotional state, which means that she's not feeling quite on the same page. So as far as the emotional states of everybody in the room, I don't believe Jackson really cares how upset Michael is. I think he's very upset in and of himself, and there's not a lot of empathy happening. I think that she is feeling some but not much, just a little bit more than Jackson, perhaps. I think that Sydney has a little bit more of an empathetic view to Michael for some reason, I'm not sure as to why, but from the blip that I saw of her, I don't know, a few minutes ago on this, she had a fairly reciprocating emotion on her face to his visible torment as well. I haven't been able to see much of Phil, which Phil, not Dr. Phil, Phil is the other gentleman that's up there, and he worked for Michael as well. I haven't seen much of his emotive state so far. They haven't shown too much of it. But that's the feel that I'm getting from the room. Dr. Phil, he doesn't care really, neither here nor there. He's done this enough that it doesn't really hit home for him anymore. So he's pretty detached, um, but that's where everybody else is at. Let's see if that kind of comes to fruition through words or, or anything else. Let's find out hating his life like our goal for this Michael was for you to be like like have a realization because sometimes you can get so clouded and in your own head in your own world like we came together with no like bad like angry feelings it's towards this me either it's but listen just listen to me like we didn't I'll let you guys this. talk about that after. okay so I was able to look at Phil's face there he's also not reciprocating any of Michael's pain which indicates more or less that he's not feeling that emotional state. Now there is the possibility that he could be emoting and all of these people could be emoting with inward emotions rather than exterior emotions. They're not displaying on their face. Perhaps that could be the case and that might be the case with him, but it is still an interesting dynamic. They are definitely going to continue this conversation and actually this is the end of the video itself. They're gonna break here and Dr. Phil says that they can all talk amongst themselves 
And I am sure that there are quite a few conversations yet to be had because some of those people are not happy with how things have wrapped up. They probably didn't get to say everything they wanted to say, and they're still not trusting Michael to hold up his end of the bargain. That's the feeling that I get from that. Non-verbally speaking across both of the prior two episodes, I think that Michael went from being extremely defensive and acting like he was a victim in the entire situation and refused to take any responsibility to this very end portion here where he is emotionally raw as orchestrated by Dr. Phil and he's more receptive to criticism and he does at least say the words, I am sorry and I failed in the correct way and doesn't deflect it. That is good. That is at least progress. Now from this point on, it's gonna kind of be up to you and I and everybody else that works with Michael, interacts with Michael. Michael has to hold up to his end of the deal, show that he's gonna change and do better, improve, and not be, well, who he is now. Whether or not that will happen is another question altogether. I will say that Michael is still very young, so he has plenty of time to grow, but he also has a fair bit of success early on, which means that he might not be willing to see any reason to change. And these sorts of things that he's dealing with, this overt defensiveness is something that can expand beyond the realm of professional business stuff. And I feel like it likely has for him. So if that's the case, it's not gonna be so much that he just has to do better business, he has to be a better person. And I'm not totally certain that a couple of interviews on a national TV show is gonna be enough to do that. But maybe having your career almost destroyed is. So take this or leave this as you will. I wanted to wrap this up just for sake of continuity and also because I think that some of you might have liked to see it. So I hope you enjoyed these two little videos here. If you have any other analysis that you would like me to do, let me know in the comments below. I do try to keep up on those. If there is a recurring request from a whole bunch of people, then I will probably get to that first. If there's just a whole bunch of requests, then I'll enter up a poll and uh, you can kind of vote on that as to what you will or will not like to see. But that's how that goes. So let me know in the comments below. If you did like this video, consider hitting the like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell button if you would like to see some impromptu streams and other stuff as well as just being on the notification squad or whatever they call it. Big thanks again to NordVPN. I appreciate your support of this channel and I'm sure that many of you watching this can actually use their services a fair bit. I know I do regularly in my day-to-day -day life and I'm sure you can as well. So thank you to them. Don't forget to follow all those links and enter all those codes. But, but, without further ado, that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers. Testing with the audio again. Test. Testing with the audio.